nas je 10. oktober. Sedimo u Beogradu sa veoma dragim gostem koji nam dolazi iz Malezije, sa šejkom Narodnom Kuzejnom, koji je poznat svetskoj javnosti kao jedan od najboljih poznavalaca islamske eskatologije danas u svetu. On je održao dva predavanja u Beogradu, jedno je bilo u Akademiji nauka, a drugo je bilo u istorijama fakulteta tamo u Beogradu i to predavanje je bilo veoma fascinantno i danas imamo izuzetnu čast i sjajnu priliku da možemo u direktnom razgovoru s njim da mu postavimo nekoliko pitanja koja nas, Srbe, najviše interesuje koje nas Srbe najviše zanima je svakako pitanje genocida u Srebrenici, navodno genocida u Srebrenici. Tako ćemo i početi naš razgovor. Koje je vaše mišljenje u vezi genocida u Srebrenici? Da li je to zaista bio genocid ili ne? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I have rejected the claim of the genocide of Srebrenica, Srebrenice, that's the correct pronunciation, Srebrenice, and I oppose the British resolution in the Security Council of the United Nations, and I was tremendously relieved and happy when Russia vetoed the resolution. Why did I do that? It is important that those who differ with me, and there are many Muslims in this part of the world who are puzzled, they love me, they listen to my lectures, they benefit from my lectures, but they are in disagreement with me on the subject of Srebrenice. Uh, so it is important for them to listen carefully to what I have to say on the subject. What is the definition of uh, a genocide? How do I define a genocide? A genocide would be an act of slaughtering and killing and exterminating a people in large numbers which is done by a group collectively in which all the members of, the so of a society or a group are in support of the effort of killing. An example of a genocide, I can give it easily. The example is in the United States of America. When a people left Europe to find a new home in the Western Hemisphere, to create a new heaven in the Western Hemisphere, they didn't tell us it, of course. They're doing it on behalf of the State of Israel. We know that because of eschatology. They wanted to build a new world, a bright and shining and dazzling new world, a golden new world. They wanted the sun to rise from the west. That's what they wanted to do. And how did they go about doing it? They met a people living in North America who were a simple people, who lived the primitive way of life. They didn't have the internet, and they didn't have aeronautic engineering, and no, no, no. They were a simple people who knew how to respect water, who knew how to respect rivers and lakes. And they came from Europe and ex terminated these American Indian peoples with the belief that they were less than human. They were subhuman. And those who came from Europe, we were the archetype, we were the elite of mankind. We were God's chosen people. And they killed them like cockroaches. That's genocide. Were there powerful voices from those people who rose up and said, no, this is wrong. 
did the pilgrims who come from the, came from Europe and the people who came from Europe to, to North America, did they collectively say, no, we condemn this? No, they did not. They all supported it, except maybe a handful. That's genocide. Not only did they commit the genocide of the American Indian people, they committed genocide of the rivers and of the lakes and they, put, they pumped their sewage into rivers and lakes. They pumped the chemical uh, poison into the rivers and lakes and they claim of themselves that they are the most civilized people and they have to civilize us the natives of the world. But those innocent people who lived in North America were dearer to the Lord God that you worship and I worship than these barbarians who came from Europe. That's genocide. What happened in Srebrenica, the story I believe has not yet been completely told. I believe a commission of inquiry that is legally entitled to pursue the truth. And whoever does not want to come forward is forced to come forward or you go to prison. Such a commission of inquiry that pursues the truth to the very end might give us some more of the story of Srebrenica that we do not as yet have. But what is already clear is that the nation, the Orthodox Christian nation, the Orthodox Christian people as a whole of this region, do not support what happened there. No. They condemn what happened there. And they would love to see those who were responsible for the massacre to be identified and to be punished. Is that genocide? Not by my definition of genocide. And so now we come to that mysterious resolution in the Security Council from Britain. Britain which has a PhD in hypocrisy. Let me repeat that. Britain, which has a, D, a PhD in hypocrisy. Britain, which appears to be trying to enter into the record the truth, but really, it's not the truth. It's not genocide. And the real reason for the British resolution was to ensure that forever and ever, there can never be any possibility of reconciliation and friendship and alliance between the two people on the face of the earth who truly sincere, sincerely worship the God of Abraham as a people. Because in Judaism, you have hardly less than a handful of them. The rest are all Zionists. The only two people on the face of the earth today who truly and sincerely worship the God of Abraham are the Muslims and the Orthodox Christians. And history cannot end between, before these two people come together and reconcile despite that Ottoman Empire and all its bloody oppression for 500 years. That these two people come together and reconcile in friendship and alliance. They don't want that. That's why they wanted Srebrenica. That's why they wanted the resolution to be adopted. And so thank, we thank Allah for Russia, that Russia vetoed the resolution. And as a consequence, I, Imran Hussein, could come to Belgrade for the first time. Belgrade never saw me before. And yet I am received in Belgrade with such respect and such affection. And indeed with love. They probably are grinding their teeth with frustration because of that. Pomenuli ste sada u ovoj u ovom odgovoru čustu, a Srbi su 300 i više godina bili po Turcima oko Otomanske imperije. Recite nam nešto o Otomanskoj imperiji i sin ste pomenuli jedan vrlo važan jednu vrlo važnu rečenicu koja se odnosi na kosovski boj. Možete li to da ponovite? I hesitate to use the word 
Turkish people because they identified themselves as the Ottoman Empire. And what you have in Turkey today is a post-Ottoman era, okay? So don't say that the Turks occupied Belgrade and the Turkish people opposed and oppressed the Orthodox. Don't use that terminology. Rather use the correct terminology that a mysterious force emerged out of the countryside. A force that was mysteriously empowered with a power which eventually was irresistible and which then used that power to oppress. And this mysterious force had a PhD in deception because it wanted to kill two birds with one stone. I mean, that is really bad to kill a bird with a stone and to kill two with one stone. The first was to misrepresent Islam, to hijack Islam and to give Islam a bad name amongst the Orthodox Christians. And the other was to mesmerize and brainwash the Muslim world into believing that this was the authentic expression of Islam. And to do that, it had to achieve what was impossible, and yet it did it. It had to take the caliphate, or khilafah, the leadership of the world of Islam, out of the Arab world and bring it to the heart of the Orthodox Christian world. That was the first bird they wanted to kill with the stone. The second one was to drive a dagger into the heart of Orthodox Christianity that will bleed and bleed and bleed forever. That the capital city of Orthodox Christianity should now become the capital city of Islam. Oh, excellent planning on behalf of Satan. This is satanic planning at its best. To get the capital city of the Orthodox Christian world to become the capital city of the world of Islam. Huh? You have to have the brains of a donkey not to be able to understand that there's something fishy here. I mean, I like to eat fish. It's nice food. So excuse the expression. Not only did they do that, the Ottoman Empire, they were able with this mysterious power that was irresistible to defeat the entire combination of Christian forces that could be mustered up to stop them at Kosovo. Once they had broken the back of the alliance of Christian forces at Kosovo, the rest was plain sailing. So Kosovo was the turning point, in my opinion. Kosovo was the turning point. So that the heart of every Orthodox Christian in this region would look at Kosovo and bleed, and bleed, and bleed. So that's where the devil defeated us. And to make the Christian believe that what big, who is it who achieved victory at Kosovo? It was Islam that achieved victory at Kosovo. Oh, you really have to be a good master of deception to get them to believe. That was Islam. No, it was not. Because true Islam, like true Christianity, like true Judaism, tolerates no oppression. No. Does not allow aggression. No. And the Ottoman Empire was an oppressor. Don't come to me with 
endless evidence that the Ottoman Empire did this which was good and that which was good and that which was good. Even Satan, even Satan speaks the truth sometimes, doesn't he? Huh? So, my statement is that the Ottoman Empire was an oppressor. Full stop. I want you to challenge me and prove to me I'm wrong. The Ottoman Empire waged jihad against the Christians and was able to market this rubbish, this nonsense that Islam has ordained jihad against all Christians. That is rubbish with a capital R. But they were able to market that view. And the Muslims believed that this was indeed jihad. And if you die fighting the Christian, you'll go to heaven. That's the rubbish that came from the Ottoman Empire. And the Christians believed <laughs> that they were fighting Islam. Where did the Ottoman Empire get this mysterious power? from and where did they, they, they get this finest expression of deception they even deceived me the only thing that saved me was eschatology otherwise i was deceived by the ottoman empire as well my answer comes from eschatology and if you want to challenge me you must come with your eschatology to challenge me my answer is that this was the Dajjal at work, the Antichrist. That it was the Antichrist that created the Ottoman Empire. And that the power that the Ottoman Empire had, which was irresistible, came to it from Gog and Magog. If you want to challenge me on Gog and Magog, then come and show me what have you done. What lectures have you delivered? What books have you written? Where is your scholarship on Gog and Magog? For you to challenge me on Gagan Magag. I have worked on the subject. I have written a book on the subject. I have lectured on Gagan Magag for 20 years now. So before you come forward to challenge me, show me your thought on the subject. This is my answer to you. Uh, Pravoslavna Rusija u koju svi verujemo e, i koju se okrećemo u ovom trenutku e, borbe dobra i zla e, je započela e, svoje akcije u Siriji e, protiv, e, protiv ove, rekla bih, veštačke tvorevine koju nazivaju e, ISIS. E, kako vidite e, ulogu Irana, odnosno kako vidite e, da kažemo zajedničku borbu između e, Irana, Rusije i pre svega e, šitskog dela islama u ovoj čitavoj stvari. So long as Iran was led by men like Mahmoud Ahmadi Najad, I could speak confident, confidently, clearly, that I know where Iran's heart was. Washington would never have negotiated in Geneva with a leader like Mahmoud Ahmadi Najad. I don't think it is. Um, wise for me to pursue the discussion any further. You people can read between the lines and they can understand where I'm heading. The role of Russia, however, is uh, something of paramount importance. Uh, from our eschatology, I have been pointing out that the Quran itself has spoken about a Christian people who will become closest in love and affection for Muslims. Whether Washington likes it or they don't, this will happen. It is star 
Udi bitch, bitch it. What is to be will be. <laughs> the Christian people, I have said it several times, the Quran speaks of them as a people who hold on to the institution of priesthood and that institution of priesthood has integrity. The Quran is commending that institution of priesthood. These are not priests who are pedophiles. Secondly, that, that, that Christian people are holding on to the institution of monasticism. And thirdly, that they are not an arrogant people. I have provided in previous lectures adequate evidence to support my view that the Quran is referring to Orthodox Christianity. The Quran identifies Orthodox Christianity with the name Rum, Rum. And the Quran has an entire chapter entitled the chapter of Rum. And in that chapter, the Quran speaks so positively about Rum that it says that on that day when Rome was victorious, which is the Byzantine Empire against the Persians, that you Muslims will celebrate that victory. This is in the Quran. That Orthodox Christian world, which is destined to become closest in love and affection to Muslims, and you could have seen the love and affection yesterday in the auditorium of the University of Belgrade. Yes, you could have seen it there. That love and affection of that Christian world, we have to now locate the leadership of that Christian world, and it is Russia. It is Russia historically. It is known as the Third Rome after Constantinople was taken by Gog and Magog. Then Russia became, Moscow became the Third Rome. And Russia is the most powerful state in the Orthodox Christian world. And so Russia is the natural leader of that world which is going to be closest in love and affection to Muslims. And so it is but natural that the Muslim who has eyes with which to see, and not all of them have eyes that can see, a lot of them are dancing to every tune that Dajjal plays. You know the CIA providing the weapons for their bogus jihad and bringing to the big ISIS or the Islamic State and having us believe that this is true Islam. What rubbish! What absolute total rubbish! What foolishness! Are you going to, to be, take me to be a fool? That that is Islam? Don't you have any sense in your head? The religion that came with Muhammad Allah's blessing be, him, be upon him was a religion that was attractive to people, attractive particularly to the oppressed. The people of Syria, the, the people of the world of Islam are today oppressed. They have been oppressed for a hundred years or more now. So if Islam was coming with ISIS, they should be running to ISIS. But where is your sense in your head, you fools? They're not running to ISIS, they're running away from ISIS. They're running to Germany. They're running as refugees. And you call that Islam, don't you have any sense in your head? Can't you see? At this time, Russia is the power that is leading the Orthodox world. And Russia is the country to which we should be turning to, to support. Not a horse. And they've created ISIS to do the opposite. Because they know what plans they have for Russia. And they're hoping to use ISIS as a strategic weapon against Russia. 
But that is not all that I have to see about Russia's leadership. From an Islamic eschatological perspective, I have something more to say. The Quran, if you have some familiarity with the Quran, if you have studied the Quran, if you know the Quran, then come and challenge me. If not, get out of my way. The Quran in the chapter entitled The Cave. You know the Quran has verses which are plain and clear and there are others which have to be interpreted. Yes, there are two kinds of verses in the Quran. And those which have to be interpreted are limitless in the knowledge that they offer. Even of all the seas in the world have become ink, you will not be able to exhaust the meanings that can come from those which are to be interpreted. And there is in the Quran uh, the figure of Zul Qarnayn, and uh, he is connected with Gog and Magog. Hmm? Uh, and Zul Qarnayn is someone in Surah Al Kaf of the Quran who is endowed with power by the Lord God. But his power rests on the foundations of faith. And he travels in the direction of the setting of the sun, the first journey, and then in the direction of the rising of the sun, the second journey, and then the third journey to the north, and that's where Gog and Magog was. But we're concerned with the one to the setting of the sun. He came to a body of water. The Quran describes it as Hamia, Ainun Hamia, a body of water which was dark and murky. And all the commentators of the Quran are all in agreement. It's a Black Sea. It's the Black Sea. And of course, you know Crimea is in the Black Sea. Crimea is in the Black Sea. So let's proceed. It's the Black Sea. And then the Lord God says to Zulkarnain, how are you going to deal with these people? When power rests on the foundations of faith, how will power be used? And he says, I'm going to punish them. When power rests on the foundations of faith, power is used to punish the wicked, punish the oppressors, punish who are those who are terrorizing and corrupting the world. And he says, when they go to you, you will also punish them, double punishment. And he says, those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct, I treat them well and reward them. Karnain means one who possesses two horns or who impacts on two ages. Which one is it? The Quran has never used the word Karn to mean horn. So the implication is, this is a story which impacts on two ages. One, at that time before Gog and Magog was released into the world. And the second of the two Karns will be at a time after Gog and Magog are released into the world. That's it now. At this time, power is once again re-emerging. In the post-Bolshevik Revolution age, in the post-Communist age, in the post-Soviet Union age, when Russia is returning to her Christian heart, to her spiritual heart, Power is once again re-emerging in this region of the world, resting on the foundations of faith. That is what Putin represents. And that power will now be used to teach the oppressor a lesson that he will never forget. You can close your eyes and go to sleep. This is what's going to happen. Russia is going to teach them a lesson they'll never forget. And we Christians and we Muslims, because you are my brothers, we're not afraid to die. They might be afraid to die. If millions and millions of us have to die in order to teach the oppressor a lesson, we don't mind dying. I think it would be difficult for them to give me a visa again to come back. Well, let's try. Let's see. see. Užasnog talosa izbeglica koji dolaze sa Bliskog istoka, 
taj talas izbeglica hrli prema Evropi, oni prolaze kroz teritoriju Srbije takođe. To je nešto što nas veoma zabrinjava i volili bismo da nam kažete vaše mišljenje o tome. I have already identified one cause. The people are fleeing from terror. They are terrified. If that was Islam, represented by ISIS, they would be welcoming ISIS, and they'd be running to ISIS, and they'd be praying to God for ISIS to deliver them from oppression. But the opposite is happening. They're terrified by this bogus CIA-created Islamic State, and they're fleeing from it which is enough for us to discredit the credentials, the bogus credentials of these people, that they represent anything connected with Islam. But there are other reasons why uh, this exodus is taking place. Uh, number two, I have spoken about the monetary system, which is bogus, it is fraudulent, it is haram from our language, haram, prohibited and it is fun functioning as a suction pump you have a uh, the, the, the machine that you use for the carpet what's it called vacuum cleaner it suctions in the dust similarly with this monetary system it's functioning as a suction pump in the vacuum cleaner sucking the wealth of mankind and that wealth is flowing to the, the civilization created by Dajjal the godless oppressive and decadent civilization created by the Antichrist modern western civilization and Russia is not a part of it no Orthodox Christianity is not a part of Western civilization. The means of identifying the hand of the Jal and uh, Gog and Magog in modern Western civilization has now become apparent, clear. And that is that if you want your economy to prosper, if you want to, your money to remain stable and not to collapse, then you're going to have to enact legislation making it permissible, legal for a man to marry another man and get a marriage certificate. And if you resist us, your economy will collapse. If you resist us, we will destroy your money and your money will become like Zimbabwe. That is the civilization out there of Gog and Magog and of Dajjal. It has already succeeded in reducing most of the world to poverty, to abject poverty. And now the people are sinking into a state of destitution. And they can see that there is no way out, none. We are not only poor, we are permanently poor. Is that good economics? <laughs> Is that a healthy and sound economic system which reduces most of the world to permanent poverty? And another part of the world is not only rich, it is rich forever and ever and ever. And constantly growing richer. So naturally, you don't need a PhD to understand why the exodus, why the river is flowing. The people can see there is no hope, none. And if you want to have bread, that's where it is. You've got to go there. So once the refugee crisis opened a door, the refugee crisis from Syria, it opened the door and Afghanistan took hold of it. And the Afghans were fleeing Afghanistan to come here. 
and other people are now fleeing to come here and there are people who are not Muslims and they pretend to be Muslims to get through we <laughs> refugees why? because it doesn't matter whether you're Christian or Muslim or Jew or Hindu or Buddhist you're still poor and you're miserably poor so if this analysis is correct they have to do something to block the door because if they don't this is going to become a, an ocean of mankind descending upon them and they deserve it but there's a third and a more sinister reason why they are happy that this flow is coming to them on the one hand it gives to the world the appearance that it legitimizes them the people are coming to them, they're not going to Russia. So we are the good guys, to use their language. The other sinister reason is that they're preparing now for war. War on Russia, war on China. And to wage that war successfully, they need more than to win the war on the, in the air. To win the war on the, in the sea they need to win the war on the land and to win the war on the land they need a lot of guinea pigs who will fight the war on their behalf like the latin americans who joined the u.s armed forces to get a green card that's why we're there we don't mind killing all the iraqis we get a green card so all of these people going out there now the elderly people can't go. They can't make the trek. No. But many of the women can't do it. So who are going? The young men are going. And when the young men go to, to Germany and to Belgium, and say, guess what's going to happen to them? That's right. They're going to be in the armed forces fighting Russia. So this sinister reason, they're getting guinea pigs for the war that's coming. Um. Ovih dana na internetu osvanule su vesti da NATO priprema svoje mini atomske bombe u bazama u Italiji. Vi ste rekli da je treći svetski rat već počeo. Da li je to, da li je to tačno? We don't need any news about atomic bomb being stored in Italy. They've been doing it for a long, long time now. At this point in time, there's a ring of nuclear weapons around Russia. The news is around Russia's neck. And they're doing that to intimidate Russia. But they made their plans and Allah made his plans. And Russia now has a leadership which is said to them, we're not afraid of war. And they're surprised. They'd much prefer to win the war without having to fight these cowards. They much prefer to fight Libya, these cowards. They much prefer to fight the war only from the sky where they can kill without being touched. But to fight a nuclear power, that's a different ball game. And Russia is saying, don't mess with nuclear Russia. And Russia is showing that it has a back made of, backbone made of steel. And Russia is saying, we're not afraid of you. So now they are, they are in a, a, a fix. They don't know what to do. Because the American armed forces, they don't want to die. They're afraid of death. <laughs> we, the Muslims and we, the Christians, we're not afraid to die. If millions of us have to die in order to teach that oppressor a lesson, we don't mind dying, but them, they're scared. They don't want to die. And this is what's going to happen if there's nuclear war. The problem is they can't get out of it. They're stuck. They're now face to face in Syria. Russia is not going to withdraw from Syria. Russia is going to continuously augment its military presence in Syria. That message is plain and clear. 
they're now in a fix. They don't know what to do. They have to respond to Russia. And the more they respond militarily by empowering and building their power north of Russia, the, Ru the Russians will continuously respond to them. So there is nuclear war coming. The lesson or the message that I would like to deliver, and I'm doing this now thanks to your interview for the first time, is that in the same way that these rascals have been recruiting people from all over the world to send them to join ISIS, offering them 1,000 US dollars a day to go and fight, hmm? and offering them all kinds, buying people all kinds, giving them this stupid foolishness that if you go there and fight and die, you're going to heaven. No, you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. Well, in the same way, we, the Muslims, who have our hearts in the right place, we should recognize that this is the confrontation of all that is coming. And the Muslims who want to support the cause of justice against oppression in the world should go and join the Russian forces. The Muslims who are in the Russian Federation, first of all, because you don't need any change in citizenship on Saan, no. And there are 20 million Muslims in the, in the Russian Federation. So I am sending a message to you, join the Russian armed forces and go to Syria. So there is a, a formidable Muslim presence that is opposing the oppressor. And when you do that, then the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, will be fulfilled. Because he said that you will make an alliance with Rome, with Orthodox Christianity, in the end time. I am not waiting for the government of Pakistan to make that alliance. Excuse me the American Islamic of pa uh, American Republic of Pakistan to make that alliance or the American Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to make that alliance forget them forget the rulers they're in Washington's pockets I'm saying to the Muslim peoples go and join the Russian armed forces and fight in Russia in in Syria against ISIS so that we can re we can realize the fulfillment of the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, that in the end time there will be an alliance between Muslims and Orthodox Christians. A few final words. Žao mi je što je ovako kišno vreme i što nećete moći da posjetite, recimo, Vinču ili Letevski vir. To su mesta odakle je potekla civilizacija pre 10.000 godina, pre 6.000 godina, odakle se civilizacija sa ovih prostora naših dunanskih širila u druge evropske predele, ali nadam se da ovo neće biti vaša prva poseta. Srbiji, da ćete ponovo doći u Beograd, to je grad koji traje hiljadama godina i odoleva svemu. Uvek ste dobro došli i hvala vam na ovom gradu. Thank you very much. I met with the Mufti of Belgrade yesterday and I will be meeting with the Patriarch of the Orthodox Church on Monday. And uh, we are in negotiations for organizing something for next summer, which I think will excite you when you hear about it. It will be premature on my part to mention it now, uh, but it will be something that will be bringing uh, the Orthodox Christians and the Muslims closer to each other, and which will bring me back to Belgrade. Thank you. Inshallah. Thank you.